welcome everyone. Welcome to the studio on this gorgeous Saturday. It's gorgeous here in Portland, Oregon. I, I see that it's not so gorgeous in other parts of the country. So um, I'm sending you some sunshine here from, from Oregon. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that I'm, I'm fine where I am. There's lots of new Portland's in the news. Um, I'm safe. I'm fine. I'm here. So all that's good. None of that's near where I am. So, um, yeah, so today I want to first start out the, the, um, the lesson by talking about yesterday's lesson. So yesterday I did a, um, what I'm calling super stream lesson for my monthly subscribers. And um, I just wanted to talk a, about it a little bit because I actually worked on it quite a bit after the lesson. Uh, so I made some changes, so I want to talk about uh, those first, first thing, because I think it, it might be informative. And, um, and then I'll just, um, I, I just have a, a couple announcements about the monthly subscription, and I'll, I'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that, and then I'll get right into my uh, demo today. Today I have, th I'm going to probably, I hope I have time to do um, two possibly three little um, paintings of water reflections. And I think they'll be fun and nice and loose and, and kind of kind of simple compositions. So I think that will be good. Okay, so let's jump over here to the, to the lesson piece from yesterday. All right, so um, yesterday, I, some of you that have watched, you might notice a couple of the things that I did uh, after I finished. Uh, the, the main change that I made was I lightened this hillside up a lot. And that was a big improvement because I, I was a little bit struggling with the, the aerial perspective. Um, the, the reference photo doesn't uh, seem to reflect this the aerial perspective very much. And I find that a lot as a painter. I, I need to exaggerate that effect um, because oftentimes a, a photo doesn't really catch it quite. And so when I lighten this, I also had to go ahead and lighten this one. I also just dragged some pastel right across this so I got that little effect of the clouds intervening here. So I really feel a lot more air here. The other thing that I did, and so then this, this value and these colors, I brought back behind my foliage mass here, which I think worked out really nice. Then I changed the intervals of these tree trunks. I, I had them very much too, too even. So it, they're still kind of even now, but at least there's a little bit more um, kind of action in between these guys. And then the the last thing that I did that I think really just gave it that little pop was I went ahead right back here and I really put in some nice bright uh, color. I used these really beautiful bright um, unison pastels that I have and I, that worked out really nice in this case. These are the kinds of colors that you go, oh wow, I'm never gonna use that. It's just, it's so bright, it's so chartreuse. But in this case, it worked, these worked out just great. Um, so that was it. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And so I'll post this on Daily Paintworks along with the other demos that I do today. Um, shortly after today's demo. So yeah, so I th I'm happy, I'm really happy. Um, so um, before I get started, I have, to, <laughs> I have to remind you that if, so the lesson yesterday was part of the monthly subscription. They get a, a monthly super stream lesson. It's a two hour long lesson. I really, yesterday I really went in depth and talked about broken color we really diagrammed out the, the composition before I started. So um, yeah, so we really went into it. 
So the monthly subscription right now is pastel um, painting lessons with Marla, the monthly subscription. I'm sorry, not painting, it's, it's monthly, yes, monthly pastel painting lessons online. And you can view those lessons, you can view the sales page for that on, at paintinglessonswithmarla.com. So head over there and check it out. The monthly subscribers get uh, what is it? I gotta, I gotta look at down here at my notes. We're really proud of it. They get two years of content, hundreds of hours of content. I think it's um, over 140 videos, hundreds of pages of study guides, and we're adding new features all the time to the monthly subscription. It's where I put a ton of my energy. Um, it's my, it's my, my main, my main jam on my website. So it's, um, we've got new features, the live streams, and we're doing um, what I'm calling Marla's monthly mileage training. They're little exercises that you get every month. So you get a little schedule and you get these exercises sent to you. So um, I'm just super, super proud of it. So that's on sale until the end of, for, well, for the summer, but one more week, there's a coupon in addition to the sale price, there's a coupon for this week, this coming week. So head over and check that out. And then there's the other workshops too, workshops in oil and watercolor. So you can check all that out at paintinglessonswithmarla.com. We're working on acrylic. You can see behind me, we're, we're working on some acrylic stuff and we're really excited about that as well. Uh, I'm, I'm just actually really loving it. I had so many people see my big paintings and say, hey, when are you going to do an acrylic workshop? So I finally kind of finally broke down and so I'm doing it. Now, the other thing that I want to mention before I get started painting is that I just released my new color confidence handbook. So if you go to paintinglessonswithmarla.com and sign up, for my mini lessons, you get that uh, color confidence handbook for free. It's really pretty cool. Um, my most, uh, to me, the most important things that I know about color um, are in that handbook. It's laid out really nice. It's really, it's simply done, but I think the information in it is really, um, um, just really key to getting vibrant color into your painting. So check that out. And also, uh, make sure you subscribe. We got a new subscribe button to my channel here, and so you get notifications of um, when we're doing these streams. And uh, you might see that we've enabled Super Chat so that you can um, give to the cause of making sure that I have um, energy, time, money, so on, to do these uh, free live streams on YouTube for you guys. So that this is my whole spiel for right now anyway and um all right so i'm gonna get painting yay finally okay okay yeah i'll put my hair up and let me get this little guy down yeah i think it turned out not nice it has a nice kind of airy um spring feel to it which is what i was after in the painting And cows, little cows, so that's pretty pretty fun. Yeah, okay. Let's find the spot to put that down. Which, okay. So I'm going to start, Kevin, I'm going to start with the green water reference. Okay. Got it? Okay. And let me get yeah, on my iPad. Today, I, I don't... Um, I don't have, I haven't printed anything out on, in my hand, so I'm going to be looking at my iPad for my reference. So um, yep, yeah, green, green water. This is the Clackamas River in my area, and it's really um, on a beautiful. It was a summer day, but it's one of those beautiful, soft days that we have here in Oregon. 
And so these are going to be fun. Just um, all of the reference photos that I chose for today are rather simple compositions. And I like that. So then I can just kind of um, concentrate on other aspects, concentrate on color and mark making and so on. So I'm going to get this over a little bit. I have just a teeny little bit of wiggle room. I cut these pretty close. So I want more water than trees. And a little bit of land mass here. I really like how the trees, they get lighter, they get softer, and they get smaller, so the, all, all this good stuff is happening to tell my viewer where things are sitting in space. This shape of this guy, it's kind of jutting straight out like that. There must be a log or something there. I'm not going to do that. I'm, um, I don't think that that's particularly um, intriguing. So. Now, reflections, they come right towards the viewer, so you want to keep that in mind. And uh, Marla, um, you post these uh, paintings, your finished paintings are posted oftentimes on Daily Paintworks. Yes, I'm going to post the, the finishes on Daily Paintworks when I'm done. I, I try to do it most times. Also, okay. a trivia question for the chat. What color new pastel is Marla <laughs> currently using? <laughs> That's not a, <laughs> that is not a trivia color question. It's, my, it's my, definitely my go-to. I feel like doing, using my, my go-to today. When I, when I feel the need to go easy on myself, I guess I'm feeling that. Sometimes I'm totally willing to put myself um, in front of you guys and not not be at all worried about anything. But I don't know. Today I'm going easy. Does it? Now this um, reference that, that I'm using, this green right here, it's really kind of bright green. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I, I might. I might. Well, I'll see. I like this, the, um, the softness overall of the whole thing. I also see some kind of brown in there. That's kind of nice. Also, Marla, what's your favorite surface to paint on? <laughs> my, my right now, my favorite favorite surface is a uh, pastel mat. Um, in to paint on in pastel. Yeah. <laughs> That's e those are easy questions. Easy. Okay, how about a little more uh, difficult question? Okay, um, okay. How do you decide what to uh, what color paper to use for a underpainting? Do you always do your underpaintings on white paper? Uh, can you just talk about underpaintings for a little while? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty easy. So if um, when I'm on my own, I almost always do, if I, if I wasn't doing a demo, I almost always do some kind of underpainting. And um, when I do an underpainting, I'm going to use white paper to do it. And I like to, um, I like to use fluid acrylics for underpainting um, because they're really chromatic and they 
give, give me a lot of punch. Um, and um, in terms of other paper color, I'm going to, um, on the whole, use what I've got. Um, and I uh, sometimes am I, I'm considering, oh, it's um, um, uh, a complementary scene um, to, to the scene. But most of the time, it's just a matter of, well, OK, I've got that, and um, that will work. Or I'll make it work. OK, this doesn't look like much yet. And that's OK. I'm just playing a little bit with the color. I just really love these soft colors, and I'm kind of seeing what I can, what I can, the kind of these subtle things that are happening. I kind of like that, and I, I want to get the idea that as I go back here, it gets more and more subtle. So I think that that's kind of cool. Um, but now it's time to go ahead and get some water in there, I think. So I, I like this idea of it being a little bit, little bit darker here. But I, I also like the idea of it being on the gray side. playing around with it a little bit. Um, oops, I made a little mistake right here. My neighbor has these quail, and the quail make this sound, this like little chirping sound <laughs> that's so interesting. Oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring some of this here. Kind of makes sense. That's kind of nice. Now, I have in mind Okay, now, now for some sky. So Marla, yeah. have you tried your new Lux pastel paper yet? No, I haven't tried it. I have not tried the Lux yet. I want to. I 
I, you know, my, my intention is to do some a video, like, like actually do like a little review, an unboxing kind of review thing, and I will do that. Now I'm just working this edge. I just want to find my way to w what I want up here. Because it's really pretty, and there's a lot of subtlety to it up there. So um, I just want to kind of get what I want back there. Like so now I'm just going to drag a little bit of color back over. Just going back and forth. You know, I say this a lot. Ma I'm making it and breaking it and then making it again. I just want that real ethereal look. So the water I, I want the water to have that a little bit of movement. It's pretty still, but ooh, that's kind of neat. Here's a question. Um, how do you keep the shine from getting too muddy? The reflection, uh, the reflection in the water. How do you how do you stop that from getting too muddy? Um, well, it's the question. yeah. Um, how do I keep the reflection from getting too muddy? Um, well, I don't have a lot. Um, so that these colors, the darker colors, are kind of just stained on there. So they're not they're not very heavy. So what's heavy? heavier is the, the, um, the white, the light, um, but n nothing's, you know, as long as you're, s you're staying thin, things don't get muddy. When you get too thick, then that's when things get muddy. So nothing that I've got on here is like particularly thin, uh, particularly heavy. And you're using, uh, you're using a, probably a Terry Ludwig white for the sky, right? I think it is a Terry Ludwig for the sky, yeah. And it's a white? It, it's almost white. It's not white. It's almost white. It's kind of got a little um, pink to it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 
that's good. See, this is a little bit darker in value, and it kind of would be. And not, you're not supposed to blow, but there, I did. Um. Now I'm going to switch to um, a new pastel for a couple things. Just now this new pastel lets me make some marks that are I'm a little I'm kind of scratching into what's already there that's softer. Here's a good question, uh, and I bet you the Color Confidence Handbook would help with this one. What? Can you talk about the difference between cool whites and warm whites? Yeah, um, so to me, um, yeah, the question is about cool whites and warm whites. So um, every color's, you know, got a bias on the color wheel. I, I don't think about um, color, te temper color temperature is just another aspect of hue, just um, so it's kind of embedded in hue in the way I learned color. So, um, you know, a warm white, you know, or is one of, one of these, and then these are warm, and then I come over here, and then these get to be cooler. So, I mean, you could say, I mean, these aren't quite white, but they're close. So when you talk about an achromatic white, this one's pretty, it doesn't have a whole lot of discernible hue. It's pretty white, you know, without, without discernible color. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. I hope so. I think I'm almost there on this one. I think I'm going to just about be done. Maybe get a little little idea of this distant hillside a little bit more. A little maybe a little couple different colors back there. Get um, oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to put a, something a little warm on that bank. Talking about something warm. Eh, yeah, it's a little, that's popping out a little too much. And because the whole scheme is kind of a little bit this nice, cool thing. So pick something that's got. Yeah, that's not it either. Maybe that. And just give it a little, also that kind of softness. So I, I want it to fit with everything that I've got there already. So if I don't make it soft, um, it will just pop out too much. So I, I like that. Yeah. I might I might want to darken that water a little. Just a little bit. Let's see. That's good. Okay. So here's another question. Yeah. I'm going to kind of rephrase it. Okay. Um, so when you um, when you touch and blend with your finger or hand, um, that's to create a soft edge most of the time. Yes. Right? Okay. 
Okay, so yeah, the question is when I'm touching it with my hand, um, I'm just softening an edge. I'm not like, you know, I'm like that, so I'm touching it very kind of um, uh, selectively. I'm not like going in there and like doing, trying to do a ton of blending. I'm more, more or less just softening an edge. And then, see, I'm also changing the direction of the stroke like so a little bit with the with my finger you know, moving it down I like to do that too all right I'm gonna put a little frame on this and take a look at it and see what I think it's nice and simple also another question um, how do you decide where to put warm and cool colors in a piece um, the question is how do I decide to put warm and cool colors so, um, so I don't really think about things being necessarily, um, I mean, I'm thinking about the hues more um, um, just simply than that. I don't, I don't do a lot of like, oh, you could, you could say cool colors recede, right? Because when you think about aerial perspective in terms of that in the landscape, as things recede toward the horizon, they get cooler, they get lighter, they get duller, they get softer. So in, in um, theory, you want to keep your cool colors in the distance and your warmer ones come forward. Um, and, and that's helpful to think about when you're placing color. But I'm also, also thinking about uh, overall color um, dominance, like obviously this this has a lot of, you know, it's, it's overall cool and it's, you know, the dominant, you know, color is green uh, or green in the green family. So I hope that answers the question. Let's see, I just want to do a couple, one. Okay. Nice, I like it. It's kind of <laughs> nice. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, which one we got? Um, boy. Let me see. How about we do? Um, How about? Um, I don't know. It looks good. Uh, let's do the fall one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for you guys that are that just may be coming on, make sure that you head over to paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check out the um, monthly pastel painting lessons online. We're having a sale on that right now. And um, there's also, a, if you go to the um, mini lessons and sign up, you get the Color Confidence Handbook. And um, there's, a, there's a coupon for the... Um, anything else on the website right now. So that's um, a pretty good deal. And let's see, yeah, what else do I need to mention, Kevin? I think I, I, think I got it. Got it? Yeah, let's get back to painting. Let me put this one up there. And so yeah, today, simple compositions. So you can just be a little bit, I like doing that. Um, uh, even just coming out in the studio, playing with a composition that I'm really familiar with, something that I've done a bunch of times, because I really get to be much more playful with the color and start, in my mind, I'm kind of exhausting all the possibilities that are there for a particular scene. You know, I can impose a different, like, you know, to do the one that I just did, you know, I could do that in different colors. So this scene, this is a, actually a different river. This is the Willamette River and different time of year, but very similar look, right? This is a river view, but... Um, now I get to play with the color completely differently. Nice blue sky, blue water. Um, 
Let's see, what do I want to do here? Um, one thing I want to make sure, I want to make sure this is pretty straight. Even though the, it recedes, I just want to make sure I get that straight across. My tree line, I don't want to get it too big. There's this distant little sliver of mountain that I see back there. That would be kind of fun to catch. This is the other side. The, these guys are kind of in shadow over here. Then the bank. I see a little bit of edge. I think that'd be cool to have a little bit of the bank. And then it kind of comes forward. Maybe, maybe something like that. It'd be kind of cool. And in, in this case, it kind of helps frame what's going on over here. This, these trees right here are kind of in half light. And that's always interesting and fun to paint. The water, the water's got a kind of a sheen to it, and then the reflection. And so then the reflection can't be too big either. And then I come here, and the trees get smaller. I'm, I don't think I'm going to put these poles in there. I don't think so. Keep it simple. Okay, where do you start? From here. Um, the, I always start with the easiest thing for me, what, because I want to get myself into the painting as quickly as I can and start establishing the color and value, re mostly value, but then color relationships as quickly as I can so I can start seeing the th whole painting because that's how you finish a painting, you work the whole. So what's the easiest thing for me in here? It's to see that these are green. get these and then I just want to bring some of that down maybe a little bit darker for here and then I'm gonna come over here and grab my some of my faves And I've got some nice, rich color in here. Okay, that's nice. And then and uh, Marla, mm. can you just talk a little bit about your reference photos? And, uh, you know, you take most of your reference photos. Yeah, I pretty much take all my reference photos. I don't paint from other people's photos. Um, pretty much um, I can say that I don't paint from other people's photos. Um, I mean, I have, but um, I don't like to because I, I, I want to. Um, I, f I feel like when you take the photograph that you're already um, – You've already done some work for yourself. You've you've done some of the composing, um, and uh, it's also it's yours, so you can um, use it however you like. Um, if it's if you're using other people's, it can get tricky these days. Um, so I think there's a lot of good reasons to take your own if you can. And I know a lot of people can't. There's, you know, people that can't. So, um, so if you can't, um, just be careful uh, what what you're using and how you're using it. Is that 
distant um, land mass. I'm just wanting to remind myself about that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get that blue sky in. It's pretty, it's pretty dark up here. I'm going to just have fun with it. Get some some nice, yeah. That's good. Have a fun. <laughs> Here's an interesting yeah. question. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can try to figure it out. It says the reflection in the water is always darker in colors. Uh, I think the reflection is always lighter, correct? Um, actually, usually it's darker. Darker. Yeah, it's usually darker because it's usually reflect. It's all. It's also taking on some of what's um, what whatever is happening in the water, whether th if the water's got some silt or whatever is happening with the water. So it's taking on some of that. So yeah, it's usually a little darker. Now, that being said, okay, I'm not going to really adhere to that always. I'm going to make my painting look good. So um, there's that too. So, you know, technically speaking, I mean, it depends on what what you're after in your painting, I think. And there's a difference no. between a highlight, a glisten, a shine, that kind of stuff. So the water's pretty dynamic, so there's all yeah. kinds of Yeah, oh yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on in water. It depends on whether, you know, is it moving, is it, is it got silt, is it got, um, yeah, all kinds of stuff going on with water. Yeah. You know, and it's good to study that stuff, for sure. take it into account. Definitely. And it, it's interesting. And I know for, um, you know, students that are starting out painting, maybe, you know, you're, you're, the, the, the best way is to paint what you see, right? That's the, that's the way we all kind of start out. And so we try, you know, when you're starting out, you're trying to, to paint kind of more faithfully, I guess, what you see. Um, and then as you um, move on, you're, you're doing something maybe a little different than that. Okay, now I've got that kind of worked out, so I need to go ahead and get the sky in because I'm having too much fun here. So I'll get, get something going for the sky. Now, so in the case of this, the, the sky, I'm not going to make the sky as dark as this because for one thing, 
this is this water is reflecting the sky at at its zenith and i don't see this in any of that here i don't i i see the sky much lighter more at the horizon so i i never am going to get to this dark sky in in my scene here so my sky is going to be lighter overall All right. Uh, do you actually see the colors that vivid, or are you using artistic license? Yeah. The question is, do I see the colors that vivid, or am I using artistic license? Yes, I see them that vivid. And yes, I'm using artistic <laughs> license. It's both. It's, you know, I see it and then I'm going to, oh, I'm going to, I know that's going to look good in my painting, so I push it. So, uh, in some cases, so it's all of that um, going on. Um, Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not talking very much, and that's a that's a sign of like, oh, okay, I'm I'm getting kind of in in the flow a little bit. That's a good thing. Nice. We have one comment about how on these smaller pieces you don't seem to block in as much. You seem to get right into uh, more uh, sort of aggressive strokes and more confident strokes. Uh, is that just this, because it's a smaller piece and you're working fast, or what's um, the story? Yeah, uh, yeah, so I, I don't block in as much in the smaller pieces. Um, yeah, y you know, some of that is um, a function of, I think, the, um, the it's a couple of things I think going on there that is that I'm um, maybe in some of the in the choices of of my subject then I may be a little more confident so then I'm not you know having uh, that, that I don't feel as um, much the um, need to maybe block in um, it, it might also be um, a little bit of a function of um, the fact that I'm not, sometimes the blocking in is because I'm doing that for you guys, 
because I know that's how you, you know, structure a painting. But I might, if I was left on my own devices, I might not do it quite that way. Um, So yeah, there's, you know, there's a little bit of that do as I say, not as I do, you know, going on, I think. Now I'm, I'm just putting some of the lights. Oh, that's pretty fun. We have one uh, comment here. She says that the trees look a little bit like a cityscape. How would you make them look more, how would you sort of uh, bring out the foliage a little more? piece like this oh um yeah i think yeah I'm, I'm kind of intentionally doing that not not to make intentionally a cityscape i'm making the the edges kind of a little more blocky yeah i mean i could play with these edges a little bit more you know and, and make them softer and go in there and um i i just had kind of fun um, just getting in there and um, making those edges a little more um, uh, di kind of direct strokes. Yeah, so you could go in there and play with that. that. So, you know, so much of what we're doing is all about the edges. So, yeah, that, that, that's a kind of just go in there and soften a few things. And also, you know, just kind of recognizing what, what's happening with the marks. I kind of like the look of it. There we go. Got some a simple reflection going on. That's good. Can you talk a little, a little bit about um, your inspirations, uh, pastel painters who inspire you, or just artists who inspire you in general? Yeah, gosh, I, I, I love to look at um, other art. Um, over over the years, I've um, you know I my background is illustration, so I was really you know initially like really inspired by um, uh, illustrators like N. C. Wyeth. Um, so um, love to look at that. I still love to look at that that stuff. Uh, I um, you know I look at painters like. George Innes, and um, just a kind of a wide swath of painters. Of course, contemporaries, you know, Wolf Kahn, and um, uh, yeah, there, God, there's so many. 
there's so many painters to look at. Um, lately, I've been looking at Henri Lacidne, and love that stuff. It's really beautiful, kind of ethereal um, painting. Uh, uh, God, who else have we been looking at? Uh, oh, Degas. Yeah, we look at Degas. And, and, you like um, um, and, okay, and oh, I just recently, my, my mom, why don't we um, go to the other camera? What about Twatchman? Oh, Twatchman, yeah. Um, there's this guy named Twatchman. And then um, I've been looking at this guy who painted uh, hummingbirds, Martin Johnson Heed. And um, oh, George Benson, just amazing watercolors. And um, who is that other guy that um, I just got a book about um, some pastelists? I think didn't we do a video that was we did there's we a did video there's on a video YouTube. on you, YouTube about the books some recent books that I've got um, oh I just got a beautiful um, volume my mom is a retired librarian um, not r library director I should say and she loves to help me dig into a little more obscure painters and find good books. So we've been doing a lot, a lot of that, and I uh, just got a beautiful book on N.C. Wyeth. It's just amazing, um, works of his that I had never seen before. So, um, yeah, I spend quite a lot of time kind of looking at other stuff and um, being inspired, not just for my own work, but for the lessons that I do, um, because I think it's really, really important. And to not just look at stuff that's... Um, that's like what you want to do, but just so you really like have a kind of overview of, of um, what's out there. I think it's really important. Pinterest is a great, great resource to look at all kinds of amazing painters. There's so many people that just, it's, it's astounding really. Um, but I also don't think that people should get intimidated by um, other people's painting. Or like, oh, I'll never reach that. Because if I had done that when when I was starting out as an illustrator, I would, you know, I'd never paint anything, <laughs> because there's so many amazing artists out there that are really inspiring. Just be inspired by it and motivated um, by by it all. It's it's, it's incredible. It's great. So um, cool. yeah. So here are the two little paintings. I'll put these up on Daily Paintworks along with the the one that I did. Um, yeah, yesterday's from the Super Stream. So yeah, so make sure you go and check out um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And the, the monthly is on sale right now. It's a really good price. And we offer so much. It's more than just videos that you paint along and, and you're off on your own. There's Facebook groups that are associated with the lessons, all of my workshops. There's the monthly trainings now, the super stream. So I'm really trying to put a lot of my energy there and really make it a, a wonderful experience. Now with, you know, things have changed a lot. We might not be doing live workshops again, us um, artists for quite a while. So I think the monthly painting lessons online is a really great value. Um, that will keep you busy all year long, not just for three days. So for the price of a two- or three-day workshop, you're going to be really busy um, doing lessons. So uh, I think they're a good value. So, okay, so I'm hoping that I'll be doing another one of these next week. Um, I'm not sure which day, but we'll be back. And... Um, we have any questions that I should answer right now? Yeah, just to remind yeah. people, um, if they're interested, there's a, there is a YouTube video where you talk about the artists that you like, and just you know, yeah. search Marla's page; it should come right up. I think yeah. we call it a book review. Yeah, um, there's a yeah, but that's just a, that's just a yeah. There's a there is a video that's a, a book review, and it's not ev everything that I'm inspired by, but I think I have like my top five favorite art books in there and um, yeah we should do that again though because that's you know people are curious it, it's good to get um, turned on to people you, you don't haven't heard about and I know it is for me okay all right you guys I hope you have a great rest of your weekend hope you get to do something creative get to paint and I will be 
back at this for you um, next week, I think. Okay. All right. Bye.